Hi, third, fourth, and fifth grade. This is Mrs. Trenitza back with your weekly library lesson. And we are gonna review a type of making connections. If you remember, we talked about making connections at the beginning and middle of the year um, with stories and texts that you read, like text to self, meaning making connections between what you're reading and something that has happened to you, or text to text, meaning when you're reading a book, um, you might make a connection with another book you've read, or text to world, which means when you're reading a book, you might make some connections between that story, that book, with something in your life, in your world, whether it's your family, where you live, um, just something that um, you might have experienced. So this lesson's called Literature, A Window and a Mirror. So we're gonna talk about how literature with making connections is like a window or a mirror. So your learning intention is I can make text to self and text to world connections and success is that you can participate in discussions making connections with text. Okay, how do good readers better understand what they read? And we've talked a lot about this and we've talked about using your reading strategies and we have done a lot of that. Um, with conflict and resolution, with sequencing. Um, those are different things that we've done lessons on um, and it's good for comprehension for you to become better readers. And making connections is definitely a good way of becoming a better reader and um, being able to comprehend what you're reading. Okay, so how is literature like a window? So think, imagine yourself or even get up and go to a window and look out. What kind of connection do you think that is? When you're looking out a window, you're seeing the outside, right? So are you making a text to self connection or are you making a text to world connection? Meaning what you're reading is like a window so you're, may, you're able to make a connection to something going on in your life, in your world. So that would be how is literature like a window? That would be a text to world connection. How is it like a mirror? Well, think about it. When you're looking in a mirror, who are you seeing? You're seeing yourself. So that would be like you're making a text to self connection, which means whatever you're reading, remind you you're making a connection to something that's happened to you personally, to yourself. Okay, here is a very um, quick con uh, making connections video and it talks about the three different connections um, and uh, maybe it'll help you understand or review or think about it since it has been a little while since we've talked about it. Um, so this will help you catch up on it a little bit. Hi friends, today we are going to be looking at how to make connections while we are reading. Our essential question is, how can I make connections while reading? Connections we can think of like puzzle pieces. The pieces fit together to make a picture. So when we make connections, we fit, fit together things we've seen, things we might already know. We put them together to make a picture so that we can better understand what we're reading. There are three ways to make connections with a book. The first way is text to self. The second way is text to text. And the third way is text to world. Before we start making connections, we're gonna look a little bit deeper into each one of these. Let's start with text to self. When we make text to self connections, we read a text and then we think, where have I seen this before in my own life? What does this remind me of that may have happened to me or maybe that I thought about or I saw in my life? We might say something like, it reminds me of a time when, and then we would make our connection. So for example, a text to self connection I've made before is with the recess queen. When I read The Recess Queen for the first time, I thought about when how I was in second grade, there was a girl on the playground who was always mean. I remember that one time she even pulled my hair. 
So what I could write as a text to self-connection would be, when I read the part about mean Jean being mean to the other kids on the playground, I think about how when I was in second grade, there was a mean girl on the playground. One time she even pulled my hair. By making this text to self-connection, it helps me understand what's happening in the story and maybe even how the people feel. Another text to self-connection I could make is with the story, What Do You Do With a Problem? Well, when I read What Do You Do With a Problem, this book reminded me of one time when I was younger and I had a problem. I had built with my brother, both my brothers and my sister, a big fort in our backyard. But one day there was a huge storm and it knocked over all our fort and it fell on top of some of our toys and they broke. This boy in the story had a problem just like I did. Listen to my text to self connection that I made. This book reminded me of one time when I was younger and I had a problem. My fort got destroyed in a big storm. All my hard work was ruined and my toys were broken. I was so upset, but I took that problem and I fixed it. I made an even better fort. That's just how like in the text, the boy took his problem and he made it beautiful. The second kind of connection is a text to text connection. Text to text connection happens when you read a text and it makes you think about another text that you've read before. It might be a poem, it might have been a story, anything like that. You might say something like, it reminds me of the book. Here's an example. We've read both of these stories. What do you do with a problem and the most magnificent thing? When I read the part in What Do You Do With a Problem, when the boy was really afraid, but he didn't give up and he tackled his problem, that made me think about another story we had read, The Most Magnificent Thing. In this story, the girl gets really frustrated and nothing is working, just like how the boy tries to run away from his problem, but it doesn't work. But in The Most Magnificent Thing, the girl keeps trying until she finally succeeds at making what she wants. In both stories, the characters kept trying until they finally got it. This is a text-to-text -text connection. We connected two stories that we read. The third type of connection is text-to-world. When we think about a text-to-world connection, we read a story, and that makes us think about something that has happened in the world or something we've thought about. Some things we might say include... This book reminds me of something in the world. This is similar to, this is like something I heard on the news. This happened when, all of these are text to world connections. Here's an example. We've read the Lorax. Now in the Lorax, all of the truffle trees are getting cut down. When we read the Lorax, we thought about how so many trees in the Amazon rainforest are also being cut down. That was a text to world connection. We thought about what we read in the text and then we connected it to what we knew was happening in the world. We said, when I read um, the story about all of the truffle trees getting cut down, I thought about how so many trees in the Amazon rainforest are being cut down. This is something that is happening in real life. We made a text to world connection. So in conclusion, there are three ways to make connections with a book. First, text to self, the second, text to set text, and the third, text to world. All right, readers, go make some connections. Okay, guys, good job. So that hopefully refreshed your memory on making connections, on the different types of connections. The text to self, which means it reminds you something about yourself, text to text, which means what you're reading might remind you to another book you're, you might have read. And text to world means what you're reading might have given you a connection to something that's going on in our world today. All right, guys, good job. We are going to listen to Horrible, I'm sorry, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. And we're going to talk about how that might give us some text to self connections, text to world connections, and, you know, maybe even text-to-text -text connections. 
All right, so let's take a listen. Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Written by Judith Voice, illustrated by Ray Cruz. I went to sleep with gum in my mouth, and now there's gum in my hair. When I got out of bed this morning, I tripped on the skateboard, and by mistake, I dropped my sweater in the sink while the water was running, and I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At breakfast, Anthony found a Corvette Stingray car kit in his breakfast cereal box. And Nick found a junior undercover agent code ring in his breakfast cereal box. But in my breakfast cereal box, all I found was breakfast cereal. I think I'll move to Australia. In the carpool, Miss Gibson let Becky have a seat by the window. Audrey and Elliot got seats by the window too. I said I was being scrunched. I said I was being smushed. I said if I don't get a seat by the window, I'm going to be car sick. No one even answered. I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At school, Miss Dickens liked Paul's picture of the sailboat better than my picture of the invisible castle. At singing time, she said I sang too loud. At counting time, she said I left out sixteen. Who needs sixteen? I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I could tell because Paul said I wasn't his best friend anymore. He said that Philip Parker was his best friend, and that Albert Moyo was his next best friend, and that I was only his third best friend. I hope you sit on a tack, I said to Paul. I hope the next time you get a double decker strawberry ice cream cone, the ice cream part falls off the cone part and lands in Australia. There were two cupcakes in Philip Parker's lunch bag, and Albert got a Hershey bar with almonds. And Paul's mother gave him a piece of jelly roll that had little coconut sprinkles on the top. Guess whose mother forgot to put in dessert? It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. That's what it was. Because after school, my mom took us all to the dentist, and Doctor Fields found a cavity just in me. Come back next week, and I'll fix it," said Doctor Fields. Next week, I said, "I'm going to Australia." On the way downstairs, the elevator door closed on my foot, and while we were waiting for my mom to get the car. Anthony made me fall where it was muddy, and then I started crying because of the mud. Nick said I was a crybaby, and while I was punching Nick for saying crybaby, my mom came back with the car and scolded me for being muddy and fighting. I'm having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I told everybody. No one even answered. So then we went to the shoe store to buy some sneakers. Anthony chose white ones with blue stripes. Nick chose red ones with white stripes. I chose blue ones with red stripes. But then the shoe man said, "We're all sold out." They made me buy plain old white ones, but they can't make me wear them. When we picked up my dad at his office, he said I couldn't play with his copying machine, but I forgot. He also said to watch out for the books on his desk, 
and I was careful as could be except for my elbow. He also said don't fool around with his phone, but I think I called Australia. My dad said please don't pick him up anymore. It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. There were lima beans for dinner. I hate limas. There was kissing on TV. And I hate kissing. My bath was too hot. I got soap in my eyes. My marble went down the drain. And I had to wear my railroad train pajamas. I hate my railroad train pajamas. When I went to bed, Nick took back the pillow he said I could keep, and the Mickey Mouse nightlight burned out, and I bit my tongue. The cat wants to sleep with Anthony, not me. It has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. My mom says some days are like that. Even in Australia. Hey guys, normally if we were at school, I would give you guys something called partner think pads, where um, there would be a part that says, I think, where you would write down what your text to self or text to world connections were that you made with the story. Um, and then you would be partnered up with someone and you talk to your partner about what each one of you wrote. And then there's a section called my partner thinks where you could write down what your partner told you. And then there's a we think where you could write things that you and your partner might have had in common. So maybe you and your partner, there was something in the book where um, you both had the same connection. Okay, so this is what the partner pad would look like. You would have written, I think, which is what kind of connection did you make? Um, what kind of connection did your partner make after you talked to your partner? And then was there anything that you guys had in common? Okay, so what Miss T did is I went ahead and wrote some things down um, that I think would be some good uh, text connections with the story. Um, things that, you know, I might have made connections and where I think that you guys, a lot of you probably made the same connection. So under text to self, um, I wrote, remind you of when you had a bad day and we have all had bad days. Um, so that just everything I read just kept reminding me of days when it just seemed like everything went wrong. Um, when I was your guy's age, same thing happened to me. I've gotten gum in my hair before. And um, that is no fun, trying to get that out. Um, when I was your age, a lot of times it was disappointing if you went in the cereal and you were hoping that you'd find a prize and there wasn't one. Definitely when I was younger and I was with my siblings in a car um, or I was getting a ride to school and you just felt like you had no room at all and you were smushed in the car. I have felt like that before. When nothing went right for Alexander at school... I've had those days too, even as a grown-up when I'm at school teaching. Some days it just feels like nothing's going right. Um, he had a fight with his friends, which has happened to all of us, right? And then most of us, we make up and become friends again. Um, he had to go to the dentist after school and had a cavity. And I know that just, you, you feel like everything has gone wrong for the day. Now I've got a cavity. And then he had a fight with his brother. Um... And I remember having fights with my siblings all the time. And then it seems like he felt like, you know, it wasn't his fault. But then when mom showed back up, he's the one that got caught. So he got blamed for everything. And trust me, that's happened to me before too. Um, so those are a lot of connections that you might have made with the story. Um, text to self um, with the story about Alexander. Now text to text could be... This story could have reminded you maybe of another story where nothing goes right for the character. Um, and there's plenty of them out there. 
So, and it doesn't have to be like a person, couldn't be the character, it could be an animal or something like that. Because remember with fiction books, um, the character doesn't always have to be a person. So this could have reminded you about another story where you've read something where things just didn't go right. And then text to world. Um, it might have reminded you of someone you know who didn't have a good day. So there's going to be days when you don't have a good day, but there also might be days when a friend of yours or a family member doesn't have a good day. And that might have reminded you of that, um, where they felt like everything was going wrong. Or it could be um, with everything that's going on now, something on the news with people during this pandemic. There's so many people that are having challenges right now. And, you know, your family might be one of them. Um, so that definitely could be a connection because Alexander definitely had a lot of challenges. Um, so it could be that, you know, that might have been the connection that you were making because things just seem like they're going um, not so good right now in the world. All right, guys. Well, you did an excellent job. So this was us doing our review of making connections um, and that's like literature like um, a window or a mirror so you can make text to self connections or you can make text to world connections um, there is also the third text to text um, if you do read a lot then you know it might help you you know think of something a connection between the book you're reading and another book that you read and all of these connections are good reading strategies the more connections you make, the better you will comprehend what you're reading. Um, and that's the most important part, is that you enjoy what you read and that you comprehend what you read. Um, and that will make you become even better readers and you will continue to read for years to come and you'll be lifelong learners until you get old. Um, that's what you want. So that is the lesson for this week. Um, I want you guys to stay safe, stay healthy, have a good rest of the week, and I will be back with you next week for our last library lesson of the year. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.